in the 13th century BC. On the eastern part of the Mediterranean, the Bronze Age empires and kingdoms still stood strong. Some of them were fighting each other, but there was still an important economic and political connection between them, mostly through the established trading network. The Mycenaeans, like all the other powers of their time, had a sophisticated and balanced trading system, meaning that they mostly exported what they had in abundance and imported what they lacked. They exported wine, olive oil, metalwork products like swords and jewellery, textiles, leather, hides and pottery, while importing copper, tin, gold, amber, dyes, spices and ivory. This network was highly functional as the palace kept all the records of the imported and exported goods written on clay tablets. It not only administrated the trade system, but also controlled the farmer's harvest, much of which was paid to the palace as taxes, and was then either exported for trading purposes or stored to be distributed in case of famine. This system seemed to be almost perfect, except from one flaw. If something in the process went wrong, the whole system would collapse, and that is exactly what happened to the Mycenaeans as well as nearly all of the Bronze Age powers. In the middle of the 13th century BC, the climate began to change, and this brought a series of droughts which combined with many cases of erosions devastated the agricultural production. This in turn brought massive problems to the whole administrative system and caused many famines. A series of earthquakes also affected the Mycenaeans, the Hittites and the Levant. As you can imagine, the interconnected global system started to crumble down and this brought even more problems. It disrupted the whole trading system and left the common people devastated. Soon, riots began, which turned into small rebellions in many regions. Many cities of the Mycenaeans, Anatolians and the Levant were burned and destroyed. Libyan tribes started to raid Egypt, which had not been affected by the climate changes and still had good farmland while maintaining a viable administrative system. Soon, many people from the nearby regions joined the Libyan tribes and a massive confrontation occurred in the Nile Delta, in which the Egyptians emerged victorious but with huge economic costs. Then followed the final decline of the Hittite Empire. After the defeat of the king Tudalia IV and his army against the Assyrians, the king's cousin ignited a rebellion against him with the help of neighboring states. These conflicts severely weakened the empire. After a few years, tribes from Thrace invaded the Hittites, probably the Proto-Phrygians, as well as Azawans and the Kashka tribe, who burned the Hittite capital of Hattusha to the ground. And with this, the mighty Bronze Age Empire vanished entirely. Meanwhile, rebellions were still going on across the Mycenaean lands. The city of Mycenae that surrounded the palace was destroyed. Pylos was burned to the ground, as well as Thebes and Orchomenus. This would have devastating effects, but it was not the end for the Mycenaeans yet. Some cities like Tiryns and Athens avoided destruction. Being flooded with people from the recently destroyed cities, they focused on a more localized economy while trying to survive the drastic changes. At that time, an even larger threat began to appear. This threat was the Sea People. Their identity remained somewhat of a mystery until this day. There are Egyptian records that mention the names of the tribes that consisted them. Many speculations were made about their place of origin. The Sheridan were probably from Sardinia, the Shekelesh from Sicily, the Denian and Equesh were Mycenaeans, the Luca were from a region in the southwest of Anatolia, and the Teresh were from northwestern Anatolia. The place of origin of the Peleset, Cheka, and Weshwesh tribes remains largely debated. Some of these tribes played a role in the recent events. The Weshwesh, along with the Sheridans, helped the Libyans attack Egypt, and the Luca were one of the tribes that pillaged the Hittite Empire during its final collapse. A large wave of raids started, probably by the Sheridans and the Shekelesh, who may have raided coastal settlements of the Mycenaeans and Anatolians, but soon many people from these regions joined them, forming a large confederation of tribes preparing to raid the regions of the Levant and Egypt. And so they did. They started with the Canaanite cities, burning and pillaging most of them, but some cities like Byblos and Sidon were able to defend themselves. Then followed the final massive invasion when the Sea People attacked the Egyptians and the Levant. 
This conflict would be known as the Battle of Jahi. The Egyptians under the leadership of the pharaoh Ramses III defeated the Sea People Confederation but at a huge cost from which the Bronze Age Egyptian Kingdom would never fully recover. Egypt started losing territories drastically and its economy began to shrink. Assyria and Babylonia were weakened as well. After 60 years of droughts, famines, earthquakes, rebellions, sea and land invasions, the mighty kingdoms and empires of the Bronze Age were either completely destroyed or in a very poor state. The only power that got out of the Bronze Age collapse in fairly good shape was Egypt, with its administrative and writing systems still intact. As for the Mycenaeans, the only cities that had escaped the rebellions and sea raids had by now shrunk into a mere couple of villages. The large buildings and palaces were destroyed or abandoned, the writing system faded and the first wave of the Dorian migration had already begun. The region entered the so-called Greek Dark Ages that lasted for nearly 400 years, but we will talk about that in the next video.